Hi, it's Steph and welcome to my new video series called Back to Basics. If you're new here, I run a small business in the UK in Bristol called Wool & Witch where I make and sell hand-dyed yarn and stitch markers. And over the coming months I thought I'd share some simple step-by-step -step tutorials to get you confidently knitting some simple projects. Taking it right back to the very beginning, I thought I would show you how to take a skein of yarn and turn it into a centre pull ball of yarn which is also known as a yarn cake. In this video I'll be showing two ways to wind a centre pull ball, whether you've got the equipment or you've just started out and just grabbed a skein of yarn. I'll be popping timestamps in the description box below if you want to skip ahead to the section you need. If not, feel free to watch the entire video. If you're hoping to turn knitting into a regular hobby, then you might want to invest in a swift inner ball winder. They are a little bit of an outlay when you first start, but if you use them regularly enough, it might be worth it. You'll save so much time in the long run, but until then, you can just use your hands. A swift holds an untwisted skein of yarn out, so you can more easily unwind the yarn and turn it into a ball. Swifts come in a variety of types, and my personal favourite is the Amish style, which I have available in the Wool & Whip shop. However, today I will be showing you how to unwind a skein of yarn using an umbrella swift. This is just because it's more commonly available on places like eBay and Amazon. Whilst the umbrella swift can hold a larger range of skein sizes, I personally don't enjoy using them as much. Uh, because I find that sometimes as you unwind, the skein loosens and then falls off of the swift and tangles around the base. The other piece of equipment you'll be using is a ball winder. They all pretty much work the same whether you've got a metal or wooden one. The ball winders do just that. They wind the yarn into balls for you. You can get luxury electric ones or you can get simple hand crank ones like this one. If you're just starting out and you don't have any of these, don't worry, you don't necessarily need them. Instead of a swift, you can just use your knees, or even get a friend or a family member to hold the yarn out for you. And instead of a ball winder, I'll be showing you later on in the video how to wind a ball of yarn with just your thumb. First things first, you might want to move the cat out of the way. If it's anything like mine, it will attack any ties, any loose bit of yarn. <laughs> so it's always best to just move her out the way. Once you've moved her, you can then pop up your swift and get everything out ready. So you want to untie and untwist your skein to start with and pop it around the swift. And then as you spin the swift, you'll notice there are some ties. So they might be yarn, they might be string. They just hold the skein together and stop it from tangling up. So you want to snip those off. On one of the ties, you might notice that it's tied to itself. This is just the beginning and end of the skein, which makes it your starting point for when you're winding the ball. You might find that you have to readjust how the skein sounds swift. I find with the umbrella swifts I have to do this a lot more often, where everything moves and kind of slips down and loosens up. You might just want to go back and retighten things. Next, if you've got one, grab your ball winder and you want to tighten it to the table as tight as possible, really, um, just so it doesn't move around or anything. And then you can grab the end of your skein, which you found earlier, and slot it into the top of the ball winder. There's usually a little groove for you to put the yarn. And then you can weave the yarn through the little spiral bit that just holds the yarn in place uh, so you get a nice neat edge to the cake and then you're pretty much ready to get cranking I like to hold the yarn a little bit tighter and then hold the the spiral like metal bit on the end just to keep it nice and tight uh, sometimes I find this bit wobbles about a bit and it can sometimes mess up the cake and make it a little bit messy. And then once all of the yarn is completely around your ball winder, um, I like to just wrap it once around the edge and tuck it in to the rest of the yarn just for the end uh, so it doesn't unravel itself. And then you can just pull it straight off and it's ready to get knitting straight away from. 
I think you'll be able to tell, but it's a lot quicker to do it with a swift and a ball winder than it is by hand, especially if you're doing it with fingering yarn, which is bad enough when you're doing it with a ball winder. But until you're ready to make that purchase, I will now show you how to do it by hand. So the first thing you sort of want to do is grab a nice long tail bit from your yarn and pinch it between your thumb and your fingers. And then you simply just want to wrap the yarn uh, at, sort of at an angle, sort of diagonally across your thumb. And then every so often you want to pick it up and twist it slightly and then go back and do the same diagonal wrap around your thumb. And then you just keep doing this, basically. It's nice and simple. It's not hard. It's just wrapping and then twisting it round and then wrapping again. You want to sort of make sure that the first few wraps aren't tight because otherwise you will strangle your thumb. Um, that gets very uncomfortable very quickly, the bigger the yarn gets. Um, if you want to readjust it, you can pull it off, but I would sort of leave it on your thumb until it's a, a fairly substantial size that you know if you're going to take it off, it's not going to unravel itself. This is a long old process and this is in double weight yarn that I'm currently doing it with. Uh, it, obviously if it's fingering weight or lace weight you'll be sat there for a while. So put on a bit of TV and <laughs> make sure you, you've got the time to do it. Uh, but once it's done it still makes a nice sensible ball. Uh, so the bit that you pinch between your thumb is the bit that you can then knit and pull from the centre. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's just got to be functional and I think at the end of the day that's the most important thing. And that's it. That's everything you need to know to wind your own yarn cake. I really hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments please leave them below. I'll be doing more tutorial videos in the future so let me know what you want to learn and I'll see what I can do. Cheers guys, bye!